Hey everybody, this has been the best week and I have so many cool things to show you. So let's go see what's going on in my butterfly garden. <laughs> you can see there's something going on right here. Right here on my swamp milkweed. Mm -hmm. Look at that gorgeous spice bush. I'm pretty sure that's one I released yesterday. There was one in the enclosure when I got home from work. Oh, and look, I was just coming in here to show you that the babies eat clothes, some of them, not eat clothes, hatch, the baby caterpillars. But look who's in here. Okay, that beauty is flying free in my garden now. And look right here. There's a baby right there. This is my wild lime. And these are cuttings that I brought in when I trimmed my wild lime a few videos ago. I am thrilled to see so many babies. So this is so exciting look there's still an egg there and there's still some more eggs in my garden so i'm regularly checking those plants too but this is the most babies i've had and a and a you hear that no no get out of the enclosure little bee um this is the most i've had at one time and i am just beyond thrilled because i felt like things were slowing down and now we're getting a little action going on. Remember my one little Eastern Black Swallowtail caterpillar I brought in? Well, it is Jay hanging and it's Jay hanging at the top of the enclosure and we're just going to make sure that nothing happens to it. So look at this sweet little guy here. So I'm going to be very careful as to not disturb it, but it is settled in right at the edge of the enclosure and I don't want anybody to come and make a snack of it. So I'm going to put some of my fabulous little Velcro stickers right above it and hopefully that will keep anything from eating through. So see now he's all nice and hidden from the side. and from the top and y'all I'm literally I'm literally here thinking please let this work please let this work please let this work because you know it's kind of a little devastating the what we go through to save these guys and we get them to the point where they pupate and then still still in the protection that we have and still Still, hmm, us butterfly gardeners, we got to be on top of it. We got to be creative and ready to problem solve. And hopefully, hopefully, this will be the trick. Meanwhile, look at my twine vine trellis. Mm hmm. All gone. And I moved the caterpillars inside because I'm not having that happen again. And also, the twine vine kind of needs to grow back while I'm figuring out what I'm going to do. And another little piece of great news. Looky, looky. You know those two little polydomus that I brought in? The polydomus caterpillars um, like a video or two ago. If you didn't watch it, go watch it. Um, it's kind of funny. Well, here's one of them. And I'm sure the other one looks like this, too. I just don't know where it is. And here is one of the monarchs I brought in. And then in the next enclosure, I have this balloon milkweed I grew from seed. Look how big it is. It is so fun, y'all. Growing stuff from seed. But up here, you can see... 
<laughs> Look, it's so tall, it barely fits. There is a sweet baby right there. You can see his um, shadow. And then there's two more. They're hanging out together. These guys are going to be nice and safe in here. Oh my goodness. I ordered um, a different enclosure. I mentioned it a while ago. It's literally been sitting in there in a box. And I think I might set it up for inside for monarchs and whatever other babies I bring in there because it's just a bigger space. And then I think I can fit like a little twine vine trellis in there. So maybe we'll check that out later. But I have something else great to show you. There are organza bags on my spice bush plant. I have some cute little green eggs and I am so 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 hoping they're gonna hatch into healthy caterpillars because I need some more spice bush swallowtail caterpillars in my life. There's little ones that turn green and then orange. They are so cute. So we'll be checking back on these. Oh and I found one egg on my potted spice bush so I put the whole pot in the butterfly haven it hasn't hatched yet but it's right there and let me show you the egg so you can see what one looks like without me having to mess with the organza bags over there So super exciting and then if those other ones hatch that are on in the organza bags I'll just move them into this plant and speaking of that I had a viewer ask why I was putting my trees in pots and um, I thought well you know what I did answer them in the comments but I thought well I'll answer that for everyone because other people might be wondering why well, I have so many uh, small tree shrub plants in pots and it's for that very purpose so I can take the whole pot and move it in to the enclosure and it'll fit in there and then the caterpillars can be safe hopefully um, and actually get to become a butterfly but there's also another reason why I do it like in the case of these two potted trees right here that you saw me pot a few videos ago. Um, these will get to be big trees. Oh look, there's a, there's a long tail skipper. And I don't have any room for big trees, but I want the butterflies that these two trees are hosts for. So I put them in pots and we're just gonna see how they do. Look at this cool dragonfly that's just perched right here. You guys, there's the coolest bee back there. It's like solid yellow. Let's see if I can get back in there. Look at that bee. who he is like I haven't seen one like that like it's probably a really common bee but <laughs> I'm certainly not the bee expert but look at this guy is he just covered in pollen All right, he flew off. Oh, and um, y'all, I just finished, like it's Saturday. I don't think I told y'all it's Saturday. 
It's Saturday and I just finished my first full week with students. I love my classes. I'm only teaching two classes this year. Last year I taught three science classes, but now I teach uh, English language arts and science. So I teach my homeroom and then I teach the teacher beside me's homeroom science and then I have my homeroom back and I teach them science and um, I really am enjoying teaching reading again it's been it's been several years since um, I taught reading anyway it's fun I, I just guess I, I I just I just I guess I like things different obviously I'm always moving things around in my garden and trying different things so it's kind of fun teaching something different not doing the same old same old but the kids are great it was exhausting it's taken my body and um, my energy some time to figure out like this new pattern of living I literally came home two days and was just like in bed that's it that's all I got for the day <laughs> but I feel like I'm getting my energy back so I'm so excited about how this school year is going to be and anyway I just thought I'd share that with you real quick I still see that yellow bee he's 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 working his way down all of the um may pop flowers <laughs> so funny how much they love those there's two bees literally right in front of me right now like they're both trying to get at one of the flowers that may pop incense is literally woven in and throughout this whole row of viburnum bush which i don't mind at all and Look at all the flowers. Can you see all the purple flowers peeking through? And the bees are just absolutely loving it. Now this is the hybrid Maypop incense. And honestly, at first when I figured out that that's what I had, I was kind of disappointed because I really wanted to have the native and I thought I had the native Maypop Passiflora. It's Passiflora incarnata. This is Passiflora incense. But now that I see what it does and why it was created, because it was, um, it's a hybrid, so it was made um, to have positive qualities of two different plants. And uh, one of the positive qualities is that it blooms profusely. So I love that. And you know, somebody asked me about um, my Maypop too, um, where I got it, because I'm not really sure, because I thought it was native. I mean, I buy native plants all over um, from um, Green Isle Gardens and Sweet Bay Nursery um, and also the Nectary. I'm pretty sure the Nectaries are all the native ones. Um, so I, I, I don't really know, but like if you were exclusively looking for the incense, where would you go look? They don't sell it at big box stores. It's not native. So native stores aren't really going to want to carry it. I don't know. Ask around. Um, I can get some. Like if you're local, um, it's easy for me to propagate. Um, you could go to the Nectary and ask Catherine and... I, I could grow some just for you, I guess, maybe. I don't know. I haven't talked to Catherine about that yet, so I don't know how she'd feel about it. But it, it, it's a possibility. So, anyway, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. And another fabulous thing, my scarlet rose mallow that I grew from seed that is, like, taller than me now is finally blooming. And it had a bloom on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and not today. Like, the day I'm here and I can film it and show it to you, it's gorgeous. And it's like, no, not today. I'm not blooming for you today. <laughs> I will go show you the plant. There is one bloom that's, like hanging from it um, maybe tomorrow I'll get a bloom I can show you oh my gosh it's so so gorgeous 
So here it is. Look how tall it is. Now this does like marshy, marshy wet. It is in my wetland garden. I mean, look, look at how giant the pods are. So maybe this one's going to bloom soon. So here's one that's done. But <laughs> you can at least see the color <laughs> that it was. Oh my gosh, they're so gorgeous. So I just, I can't believe we just don't have one today. But there are going to be more. Look at them all. So you will get to see one. You will. The little golf fritillary enjoying my lavender pentas. I still haven't tried to propagate those yet. And now we come to the fun part of the day. I'm going to start planting some of my wildflowers. And there's one that needs to get in the ground right away. It's the blue sage because it needs to be out of its pot and in the ground every day. It's like, I need water. The other plants are holding their own, but it needs to get in the ground. And I know exactly where I'm going to put it. Since it's blue, I think it'll go great in this little open spot right here um, because it's surrounded by pink and y'all know pink and blue is pretty and the lavender and it also has like a lighter leaf so it'll add you know a little more dimension variation diversity in this area so let me go show you the plant and then I will get it in the ground. Here's all my potted wildflowers. And look at, look at my, I need to give my firebush back there a drink. We had good rain yesterday, and this is how hot it is. I mean, look at it. I know it's freshly planted, and it does need more water more frequently. But we had good rain yesterday, and it's already suffering. But look at this gorgeousness right here. Look at the colors of the light green leaves and the blue flowers and you can also see that it wants a drink like its leaves are starting to curl a little so we're gonna go get this sweet baby in the ground and then I'm gonna water my fire bush and this one and then I'll show you what it looks like in that section this is blue sage i know i just pulled out a bunch of sage and i'm putting in more but this one's different it's different and it's gorgeous it's so gorgeous why didn't i buy more why didn't i buy more of these maybe they'll spread around like the other sage the next plant that's going in is this beauty right here it is a wavy leaf aster and it can get up to five feet tall. So it's gonna to go towards the back side of the garden. It is also a host plant to the Pearl Crescent. So that's so exciting. I didn't even know there was a host plant that I didn't have. Hmm? The more you learn. So there's a clump of weeds right there beside that potted tithonia. And so it's a perfect time to dig them up and then I'll put this in that spot. Y'all, there is the cutest little queen flying around. Here she comes. You see her? She's so tiny. Adorable. She's up there on that porter weed. There she is. See her? She's so little. Yeah, look at that Florida blue sky. It is an absolutely gorgeous day here. There's a lovely breeze. And I'm planting my wildflower garden. So my next wildflower, native wildflower, is the Georgia Aster. Apparently it's rare. So now I really have to keep it alive. I'm gonna go put it in the garden. 
it gets the most gorgeous shade of purple. It's like the aster, the traditional aster flower, but the shade's like a little bit um, deeper. So I'm excited to see it bloom. And it is gonna go just a little bit behind the shovel, kind of right in that area. Now, we're going to take a little break from the asters and plant a Savannah Blazing Star. Nice tall, another purpley bloom one day. <laughs> I'm so excited when, I, I don't think they all bloom at the same time, but there will be somebody blooming, blooming sometime. And it's, it's just going to be gorgeous. It's going to be gorgeous. Why? Why did I not put in a native wildflower garden before? I guess because I was waiting till now. Up next, rosin weed, and it's got a bud on it, so yay! It's got a couple of buds actually.